Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, Hope Hub. I hope you guys can hear me rise and shine. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's a busy day as well for me, uh, TGIF. I hope all of you are having a terrific um, morning thus far. I'm back, I'm back to my morning walks, even though this morning it was about maybe 30 minutes or so, but I thank God that I finally got out the bed and made it around my block a couple times. So um, yesterday was National Book Lovers Day and uh, I hope you guys celebrated. I hope you guys have the same enthusiasm and passion for uh, books like I have. Um, and um, I hope you, you know, you took a moment to kind of curl up in a corner and read a good book. So the book that I'm currently reading, which I wanted to tell you all about uh, because I have to return it to the library and now I'm thinking I'm going to have to buy it unless I maybe take another month. But this is a really awesome book. It's by Willie Jolie. It's called A Setback is a Setup for a Comeback. A setup is a setup for a comeback. I found it in the library and I, um, the copyright, woo, I did not look at the copyright, but um, it's copy, oh my goodness, it's copyright 1999. So one of the uh, reasons why I have these books uh, where it's 1999, 1989 or whatever is because in my neighborhood we have in my area we have two big libraries we have one that's a um, an innovation center and it's brand new and so most of the books in there are brand new so you'll find books like especially in personal development you'll find all the new books like grit and uh, whatever else is trending right now in terms of personal development but we also have another smaller library in my area and that library uh, even though it was newly renovated all the books in that library seem to be older books but you know what books don't expire they're there the knowledge is still just as great and what I've found is that most books actually in personal development they just take the old stuff and they remix it they just remix it they put it so, some salt some pepper some cayenne and then they put it out and they call it some new so really most of the information that you'll find out find out here in terms of personal development has been done. It was done by Napoleon Hill in 1930 or whoever it is in personal, the giants of personal development. And then the new young bucks come in and they do their own thing. Do you, do you believe that? I, I believe that. But anyway, this book is called um, Turning a Setback. A setback is a setup for a comeback. Okay, a setup, a setback is a setup for a comeback. Don't we all want that? So what I'm really quickly going to do here because I have training this morning, I have to go train. I have to go train people. Uh, so I have to get my mind right. Is I want to tell you the 12 steps that he has in this book, outlined in this book in terms of how to turn a setback into a setup for a comeback. Okay, so number one, he says perspective check your vision what do you see because what you see is what you get okay now you hear me so when you're going through a setback something has happened something has hit you check your vision and what it is that you're focusing on because most of the times we tend to focus on the negative negative circumstances but if you change your vision wash your eyes out put on a new lens and start focusing on the positive guess what things will start to shift and you start seeing positivity out there in the world and what you see is what you get that is so so important it's like faith you know when we talk about faith the substance of things hoped for and that you have to see it you have to believe it to see it same thing all right so there are 12 steps so I'm gonna keep going number two is recognize its life 101 recognize its life 101 sometimes you're the windshield Sometimes you're the bug. Oh, that's a bad, ooh, child. Did he just say sometimes you're the, the bug? You the bug, uh-uh. The sunshine is mess is, okay. So anyway, number three is focus on your goal, okay? Where are you going? If the dream is big enough, the problems don't matter. Who has a dream today, okay? If the dream is big enough, the problems ain't gonna matter. 
you just gonna keep on going like an ant you know have you ever seen an ant and you try to put something in its way every time it starts crawling uh, every time you put a leaf in front of it it goes over every time you put a stick in front of it it goes over you put a brick it starts walking up the brick it just keeps going the only way to stop an ant from the focus it has on its dream its focus on its goal and the fact that it's stocking up for winter and it's summer and it needs to stock up for winter is if you squish that bug that's the only way you're gonna stop it it's gonna go around the problem it's gonna go up it's gonna go down whatever it needs to do it's just gonna keep going so focus on your goal where you're going if the dream is big enough the problems don't matter number four make decisions you've had a setback now you must decide what you're going to do about it so don't wallow in the grief don't wallow in the valley don't just sit back and sit and wait for something to happen mm -mm. you're the creator of the circumstances well sometimes you're not the creator but if you are do something about it and if you're not do something about it decide just decide make a decision and say this is how I'm gonna handle this problem and I'm gonna go after the um, the the I'm gonna solve it the solution okay number five do not panic <laughs> there is no power in a panic decide to stay calm stay collected and stay positive yo there is so much power in being calm in a situation. Right now, I'm going to teach a class. <laughs> in this class, I'm doing, um, usually we teach in pairs, and I have the same trainer partner. But this time around, I'm doing it with a different partner, and I'm doing different parts that I wasn't doing previously in this training. So I had to relearn the content this week and just do it. And I know I'm going to be in front of this whole class, and I'm teaching a very tough subject to teach that brings out a lot of emotion in people and you know I can't panic about it I, can, I have to remain calm I gotta put on my game face I gotta dress like the the like I'm gonna succeed and I'm gonna be a great trainer and just go ahead and do it all day till 4 p.m. all right so the next thing is so in in your mind whatever is causing you panic and anxiety stop embracing the panic just tell yourself I am calm take a pause deep take a deep breath think and keep going number six stop and think step back. that sounds like what I was saying stop and think step back look in check out and think up and look at your options what say what Willie Jolie what you say what you say let me say that again he says another way to, to uh, turn your setback into a comeback is to stop and think step back look in all right so you're stepping back from your circumstances then you're looking in then you check it out and think up okay and then look at your options yo so all these 12 steps that I'm telling you are actually chapters in this book and so if the library lets me keep this book I may come back and break it down break it down all right number seven take action you can have lights you can have cameras but nothing happens until you take action. That is a word. Let me tell you, this guy is fire. This book is 1999, but let me tell you, he's speaking to me. So it doesn't matter. You can have all the lights you want. You can prepare, prepare, prepare. Even today's Fitness Friday on the Hope Hub. You can have your sneakers, your, your bandana, your shorts, your everything all put together. But if you don't take action, ain't nothing gonna happen. If you don't go out running, and all those pounds ain't gonna drop off by themselves right ain't nobody gonna come and zip up your mouth so you ain't gonna eat all right so you need to take action it doesn't matter how many lights you buy how many cameras you have if you don't take action nothing happens all right number eight take responsibility face it trace it erase it replace it Ciao. let's let's say that again remix rewind take responsibility so you're going through a challenge adversity sometimes we're responsible for the mess that we find ourselves in and let me tell I heard someone say this the other day where they said if you specifically have something happen to you and every time something happens bad in your life you blame your mom you blame your boss you blame your your neighborhood you blame whatever you blame shop right you blame BJ's you bl you're always blaming somebody other than yourself guess what that gives you permission never to do anything about what it is that happened 
right? So if you never do anything about or take responsibility for the circumstances in your life, then they just continue to happen over and over and over again until you finally realize what's the common denominator. denominator. It's you. It's me. It's like your mom's no longer there. Your mom's now in 3,000 miles away. You're still blaming your moms for the lot in your life. No, it ain't her. You can blame your childhood. You can blame whatever. But at the end of the day, the circumstances exist. Take responsibility. So he says, face it, then trace it, right? Trace where it came from, which is you. Then erase it, right? And then replace it. Yo, we need to break these down. I think I'm going to have to keep this book. All right, then harness your anger. So whenever you have anger, sometimes it's a good thing to be angry about something that happened. So you faced something, a setback. Maybe it's a business deal that went raw and something really, uh, you know, messed you up. Something that maybe was not in your control, right? So that anger, don't lose it. Use it to propel you to the next level, right? Use it, don't lose it. Take that anger. Sometimes it's, it's, it's good to go into that deep, dark place and use that to motivate you and get you out. Even today's fa uh, fitness uh, Friday, sometimes um, I've heard people say the thing that motivated them uh, into working out was to say, I ain't going to be that fat girl that I used to be. And that's what gets me out here running because they look at that picture of when they were overweight, when their waist looked like biscuits, right? When their thighs look like cottage cheese and they have that on their refrigerator. And that's what motivates them. It's that dark place for some other people. The motivator is that, you know, beautiful picture of them when they're fit or a model or some image that they're aspiring to. So whatever motivates you, sometimes it's anger for some people, that's a driver. And for some other people, it's the, the beauty and the bees and the, the rainbows, okay? Um, number 10, have faith. You are blessed and highly favored. Let me say that again. Have faith, child, have faith. You are blessed and highly favored. You're a child of God. So whenever you have a setback, Think about that. Know that you are not alone. You have, have faith. You're blessed and highly favored. Number 11, say yes. Say yes to your dreams. Say yes to your goals. Make a commitment to your commitment. Affirm to win. Refuse to lose and never give up. Let's, let's take it back. Let's take it back because he has a whole lot of mouthful in that one. He says, say yes. Say yes. Say yes to your dreams. Say yes to your goals. Make a commitment to your commitment. So just don't commit. Commit and then say, look, see, I see your commitment. I'm committing to you again, all right? Affirm to win. Affirm yourself to win. So that's like affirmations. Refuse to lose and never, ever, 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 ever give up. Number 12 is make it okay to say it's all good. It's all good, y'all. It's all good. Be thankful. Have an attitude of gratitude. So when all the chips are down, sometimes you just have to say, Father, I am just grateful for where I am. I'm grateful for what I have. I do not take anything for granted. And just have that attitude of gratitude, gratitude and be okay to say, I'm good. It's well with my soul. Whatever is happening and around me, it is well with my soul. It's all good. So that's Willie Jolie's um, book that I'm having a hard time taking back to the library, but it is fire. It is fire. And so I'm thinking I may have to go renew it. They go and look at me like, what, girl, you had this book for like a month. What you talking about? You, you, um, you're not going to, you need it to, re to be renewed. Some other people have been stopping around here waiting for this book. So just to... Um, let me tell you, there's so much um, in terms of quotes here. One of the quotes that I love in this book says, The paradox of life is that success is built on inconvenience, never convenience. Those who are willing to struggle and grow from it win. Those who are not lose. Okay? The paradox of life is that success is built on inconvenience, never convenience. I think somebody needs to hear that. It ain't going to be convenient. If you want something, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable and inconvenient. Inconvenience. Those who are willing to struggle and grow from it are the ones who win. And those who are not, lose. 
so that's this book by Willie Jolie uh, just a little bit about him in case I do um, I don't bring up bring back this book he's the best-selling author of it only takes a minute to change your life I love his picture on the cover because if you look him up on YouTube he don't look none like this oh man <laughs> we grow old at some point we mature so he's so young I was like I don't recognize you you have a mustache now and you look different um, so anyway his story in terms of how he went into personal development is that he used to be a jazz musician I think he still is a musician um, and in his life at some point his turning point in his life was he was uh, playing for a club in DC he had actually received three whammies which are the equivalent of Grammys in the Washington DC area I didn't know that he won one for jazz he was doing really really well in his career playing playing for a jazz club and he had tremendous clientele and pool but then the ju the the place he was playing for decided that they wanted to downsize and to cut costs uh, right size human re-engineer as he says and then so they cut him he cut his job basically they were like we want to try karaoke we want to try karaoke can you imagine a musician being told that he's been playing there every single day for clients and then all of a sudden the bar owner or the juke the jazz club owner says we you know we've heard about this new thing called karaoke we're gonna try that and we're gonna have you um, take a seat for a month while we do that and for him he was so upset and that was a turning point in his life and he decided look I am not gonna wait for people to create my own my opportunities for me I'm not gonna sit around and wait to be fired I'm gonna create opportunities for myself wherever they exist so I never have to face someone telling me we're getting rid of you because of cost cutting or whatever because you know everyone is uh, replaceable so that was the turning point for him and he remembered um, Lucille Ball uh, from I love Lucy and how she had been cut off from a movie studio. Do you know Lucille Ball from that uh, show, I Love Lucy? Apparently she had been fired from a movie stu studio because they had said she wasn't a good enough actress. And so she took that and turned that setback into a comeback by um, taking on new, uh, sorry, creating her own TV show and her and her husband. And that show became three times syndicated three times syndicated and you all know you still see I love Lucy all the time a major major hit so Willie Jolie what he did hope I'm saying his right his name right um, he started he went and looked for a job as a junior counselor in a high school then he became um, he went into the community and he was doing drug intervention and substance abuse inter interventions for youth um, and then he started basically speaking but in his speaking he would also sing and he was doing like edutainment what he called edutainment or motivatainment or something and then Les Brown discovered him Les Brown y'all know who Les Brown is right and Les Brown discovered him after seeing him in a program in Washington DC and I was like Cha, I love the fact that you sing that you're a musician and you also do motivational speaking can you open for me and Gladys Knight as we do this tour around the nation and so that was his first opportunity to go on tour with this major major uh, person Les Brown and Gladys Knight and open for them every night and with that came other opportunities of speaking for corporations uh, came other opportunities to be um, on tours and concerts uh, on radio and that's how he moved from the jazz club the smoky jazz club and into a, uh, a world-renowned uh, motivational speaker as well as an author all right y'all I am out out of here out of here y'all have a blessed day like follow this page we're like eight people from hitting 3,000 yo I don't like looking at the numbers but I was like ah, it's just it's just like eight or nine people to hit 3,000 on the whole pub y'all let's conquer the world y'all otherwise God bless you have an amazing amazing Friday be blessed I'll see you Monday